the cfo uh, by virtue of his position may have a uh, good opportunity to to uh, succeed the ceo thank you uh, I, i i think i can i can feel um Uh, I can feel your heart, actually, what you are saying. But the fact of the matter is that um, the uh, the comfort zone or otherwise does not come from uh, creating positions. It comes from uh, how how best you use your 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 positioning. And as I said, that this is the major problem. What you are highlighting is that quite a few CFOs. get into a comfort zone because they have reached a position and there is no asp- aspirations to move forward and therefore they are doing their own work very happily and merrily and that is what we need to well, that is what exactly what we are talking about that the role has to change by be able to set opportunities not blocking somebody else position let them move or they move out thank you sir any further questions uh, Thank you. Uh, my name is Asif Iqbal, and uh, as rightly pointed out by Mr. Khalid Rahman, and uh, I have a question for him that uh, he rightly pointed that most of our community in chartered accountants lack in interpersonal skills, and he rightly pointed out that some steps need to be taken on a very urgent basis. Mr. Khalid Rahman, what should be the number one step should be taken so that this uh, area of weakness is addressed on a priority basis? um uh, as if um, uh the, the 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 there are two or three um uh, ways that we can address this issue uh we have to understand that most of the people who come into the profession are basically bcom and in bachelors you see the quality of the people that they are coming in now obviously the starting point to have these interpersonal uh, these communication skills um and other things should come basically at a level of your schooling and your college education and so on and so forth since that there is a very major gap that has to then be nurtured at at a, at a second tier level and the second tier level is basically your examination system your your training programs in the in the in the in the um, uh, in the firms and also in terms of uh, of uh, sort of promoting it as a conscious effort by the institute itself and as uh, probably we would know that these there's a lot of emphasis in imparting these we realize that this is what is blocking uh the, uh the 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 progress of uh, quite a few accountants to be able to communicate effectively to be able to deliver properly to make presentation skills properly whereas in a, if a, an mba comes you see how prepared he is how he can market himself we don't so that is what we we need to and uh, uh, we are also taking this up in uh, in our deliberations of the council and obviously there are no easy answers for it we are we are looking at it and inshallah in due course of time uh, uh, there will be some changes in this area and that will be to different uh, uh, mechanism and uh, i think that will be shared with the membership thank you sir two two quick questions i don't think we have a lot of time um my name is hanif i'm a cfo at dhl my question is that in the pakistan scenario uh, most of the business houses are owned by family concerns and how does a cfo even a capable cfo who has all the interpersonal skills who knows the business how can he come up to the position of a ceo generally the ceo is always the empty son or his nephew or his <laughs> grand grandson so what are your comments in that uh, such a situation that's a practical situation in pakistan <laughs> look for a normal go down i think he need to change his job <laughs> No, no. Uh, an accountant has to be adopted. Adopted. Yes. <laughs> so, get yourself adopted. Actually, that's not correct. <laughs> that, that's not correct. At least, if it was, that may have been the case. Uh, I also work for a company that uh, is, is uh, family-oriented in many ways. But I think um, 
the family might be there in, 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 in some shape and form, but I think there's professional growth for people. Uh, and uh, enlightened Pakistani entrepreneurs are, are adopting and embracing the, the code of corporate governance. So one last question. Uh, my question is to you, uh, Mr. Khalid, that if a CFO becomes a CEO, how would you justify the concept of segregation of duties, number one, and second then the CFO will be responsible to whom because of he is a finance person? Um, I, I think I tried to answer your question which you had put differently uh, earlier. <laughs> my answer is the same. Uh, we have different responsibilities. CEO has a different set of responsibilities and he has to play a different role altogether and it's much a broader role. It is looking after the outsiders and in the inside, overall inside. Then CFO is basically somebody who is looking after his own given set of functions. So the role is entirely different and each has got a different role to play. There are no conflicts. Uh, there is leadership doesn't mean if you have leaders that you fight for positions within the organization. The, the whole intention of leadership is that you complement each other and supplement each other of performing better because you are looking after the, co the corporation, the corporate interest, the company's interest. You have to go above your personal interest in any relationship that you have or any um, uh, a delivery that you do, that you have to be above board and that's what good corporate governance is all about. So what, what I would like to state once again that the roles are entirely different. They are leadership roles, all of them, different responsibilities, different skill sets required also and different mindset required also. So that's what I can, I can uh, uh, share with you right now. Thank you, Harsan. I see a sense of urgency in the posturing of the Master of Ceremonies. So let me be quick about uh, reaction. Last year, IFAC board, uh, for the benefit of all of you, had constituted a task force to redefine the deliverables of the professional accountants in business. Fortunately, I was a member of that task force and this aspect was extensively debated. Finally, it was felt by majority of the task force members that the accounting bodies, which are the constituents of IFAC, basically should remain accounting bodies. You should not push them too much to go beyond the accounting domain, though individual members can have their aspirations. So the, the, the basic feeling was the accounting bodies should train their members, the students and all that, build competencies to become good CFOs. But what it takes a good CFO to move beyond and become a CEO that no man's land is common across all functions. Sure. So pushing an accounting body with an agenda to prepare professionals for CEO would be too much beyond the domain and it, it, will, crossing, it will be crossing the border. This was the feeling and uh, uh, basically they would be asked to remain as accounting bodies but those CFOs would have a holistic business vision so that the aspirations are set in to become CEO faster and they pass through the no man's land faster by competing with others. But those skills, build, building them as a part of the accounting profession was kept outside the purview of this task force which had extensive debate last year. Thank you, Thank you sir. And with that, uh, we conclude the Q&A and the panel discussion. I thank you, my fellow panelists, for your time and um, hand over the mic back to the master. Right. Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank, thank you. Thank you very thank much. You, Can we please give the panel a big round of applause? May I please request the panelists not to go too far. We have one more presentation and then we'll have the plaque distribution. The next speaker is um, going to be addressing the topic Invest to Grow, m and in, in Pakistan and not m and um, the speaker is the chief executive of BMA Capital and I just want to tell you a little bit about BMA Capital. BMA is one of the most experienced firms in mergers and acquisitions in Pakistan.